performance hacks. This little bean bag that I've got sitting on top of my head here is manufactured by a company called iMac. It comes in a bag like this. It's a little gray. They call it a stress ball, the iMac stress ball. And it's actually, I think it's designed as a um, rehabilitative hand strengthening tool or a stress reliever tool. And they sell them in bulk. I, I sported this one that's sitting on top of my head here during my master practitioner training with John Altfeld for the entire training, for the, for the entire period, all the classroom time, and a great deal of my vertical non-classroom time. Shopping, going to Walmart, walking around, getting lunch, taking various side trips. Very similar in function at a certain logical level to using the pinhole glasses, which is another very fine performance hack. This um, very simple device serves as an attention focusing tool. It, it directs attention in a certain way. If one becomes unconscious or unattentive or drifts out of a certain high performance zone, uh, you're, you get immediate feedback. The thing falls off your head. And that proved to be exceedingly useful. Um, especially during a training, uh, it's very easy to go in and out of states of um, sort of uh, high quality focus, low quality focus. You get sloppy, you kind of retune and get back there. I wanted to remain in a certain a uh, high performance kind of state or zone during the training. I wanted to get maximum value from the training. And at the same time I wanted to work on my posture and my verte vertebral alignments and uh, general state, general state of awareness. This thing is fantastic. It should be used by parents with their children. It should be used in schools. As a matter of fact, in one experience I had, the IMAX stress ball in specific was not used in a school, but a very similar concept was used. And that concept was in China, when I was in China in 1979, when the Chinese state, the People's uh, Republic of China, first opened itself to the outside world. And I was touring with a group of teachers and surgeons. So we visited hospitals, medical facilities, and schools, and got to observe firsthand how their teaching methods work. And I was very struck when we went to one school, every child was wearing a little paper crown that functioned in a similar fashion. If, if your head nodded or tilted in any degree, this little crown would fall off. And being China back in the day, I'm not sure exactly what the penalty was for having your little paper head, uh, head verticalizer taken off. But they took posture and they took uh, spine and neck alignment very seriously. And they took high performance states very seriously. And I think that's, that's quite evident in the way the Chinese economy came just ripping out of uh, a third world condition and is peeling toward a first world condition. Um, they they got it about high performance states, they got it about posture, and they were very, very uh, determined to install uh, posturally linked high performance states in their children from the earliest, earliest points of their education. So should we be using these either uh, as our own kind of new code new code self-training devices or be using them in, in NLP trainings? Well, I would be all for them in trainings and especially in, in moving practices, walking around. We could do a lot more moving practices in general. Group, group moving processes. Um, would the typical trainees, would the average training tolerate um, a constraint like this? Would they tolerate this level of neurological demand? Well, uh, you can answer that question for yourself, but if I were to be running a training, which I 
and it probably never will. Um, but if I, that were to be the case, I would certainly be wanting to introduce uh, the IMAX stress balls. If I had children that I was uh, concerned about developing uh, good postural habits and uh, habits of attention and focus, yes, I would be thinking about the IMAX stress ball. And I would also be thinking a lot about using the pinhole glasses, uh, which I today wore uh, all the way over here as I walked to the office. And then I haven't really worn them for the rest of the day. But I have noticed that uh, my vision, especially when I walk outdoors and I have a broad field of vision, there's a lot of visual data, a lot of moving things. There is something neurologically that is very, very tuned up. One added point to that is at night, before I go to sleep, I typically listen to between a, a half an hour and an hour, sometimes 20 minutes plus, um, depending on the night and the material, two binaural beat CDs, either uh, CDs from the company called BinauralBeats.com or to um, Dr. Jeffrey Thompson's Center for Neuro, Neuroacoustic Research. He has many um, CDs like Theta Meditation State, uh, Gamma Meditation State, uh, and a wide array of things. Then there's a new, new kit on the block called iDoser, which has got kind of an interesting marketing scheme. So. I think that a lot of the, the value and the, the ability to do uh, hemispheric, hemispheric work on myself with these very much ties into also using the um, binaural beats and, and allowing my mind to be present in, in numbers of different potential frequencies, um, alphas, thetas, alpha thetas, uh, gammas, betas. Uh, well, I don't typically use beta before I go to bed, but I have found that gamma, which is supposedly a, a higher than beta frequency, actually works pretty well with my sleep. So we have many superb high-performance hacks available to us. We can use them individually or in combination. Um, and if you're going to go to a training, spend a lot of money, invest a lot of time, trouble, opportunity, cost, by all means, consider utilizing tools such as these to, to maximize the value you get, to, to maximize the deep neurological installation you get from your training. Um, otherwise, you're, you're, you're probably not really getting the full value out of your investment.